So a good form plugin for WordPress can do a lot more than just have sign up forms and contact forms. We can use it in this example to create a simple e-commerce solution. You may want to sell a product, you may want to sell a service, you may want to sell a subscription. These can ha be handled with the plugin we're going to use, which is Fluent Forms Pro. Now you do need the Pro version to get access to these more professional features, but it's worth investing in if you want to open this up and you don't want to be reliant upon tools like WooCommerce, which may be just a little bit heavyweight for selling one or two simple products. Okay, so now we've talked about what we're going to cover. Let's take a look at a good example, and then I'll show you how to build all this for yourself. So this is the product page. Now, we've only got one product in this example, but you can have multiple if you wanted to. Let's scroll down. You can see there's our product. Now, there's a couple of things I want to draw your attention to here that are a little bit more beyond just the basics. You can see we've got inventory management, so we can manage how many of these we've got to sell. We can set up product options. In this example, a strap type, so they can choose what strap they want. Choose the quantity, and you can also add in personalization. So this will be transitioned over to the order whenever anybody places it. Now, speaking of orders, if we scroll back up, we can take a look at the My Orders section. And this will give you an overview of all of the orders that you've placed. It'll tell you the status, what payment method was used, the date, and so on. And then we can drill down into the actual order itself and click. And then we can see what order we placed, when we placed it, and so on. Everything you should need for a basic e-commerce setup is all built in for you. Let's take a quick look at the back end, and then we'll start setting things up and start building things. If we go to the back end, you can see this shows us all the transactions that have been placed on our store. And we can then open any of these up. So let's take a quick look. We've got the order. You can see there's our additional fields, so the strap type, the personalization, the product, the price, any payment details. We can edit this transaction. So once everything has been fulfilled, we may say, OK, this is now paid. And we'll say confirm. That's now updated the transaction. It's marked as being paid. And we see all the information we want about it. Now, if we go back to our entries, you see this has been updated and it's now showing as paid. And you see we've got the information here for the strap type, the personalization, and so on. We can even go in and filter this down even further. So there's a lot of really useful information for you as a shop owner using something like this to build your e-commerce. So to get started, there's a couple of things we need to set up. And when you really need to set these at one time, and once they're done, we can just then add products as we need to. So we're coming over into Fluent Forms Pro and into the Global Settings section. From there, we're going to open up the Payment option. And you can see we've got three pieces of information we need to fill out. So first of all, let's start off with the settings. This is where we can enable the payment module itself. So if we don't enable this, we won't have the options to be able to create e-commerce based products and things like that inside Fluent Forms Pro. So make sure you enable this first of all, fill out your information, upload your logo, and you're basically done there. Hop over into currency, set up what currency you want to use on your store and any other configuration options you want. And then we've got the pages and subscription management. So even if you're not using subscriptions, it's still worthwhile setting this section up. And you need to create two different pages. One is your payment management page. One is your payment receipt page, both of which we've seen at the beginning. So all I've done is I've created blank pages for both of those. And then I've just selected those inside here. Save your settings and you've got those basics set up. Next, we're going to hop into the payment methods. Here you can see we've got a selection of different payment methods. So most use cases should be covered. So Stripe, PayPal, and so on. All you need to do is enable any of the modules you want. So for example, we may want to enable Stripe. We can then connect this up. And what I would recommend is make sure you're working in test mode. Use the sort of sandbox environment to test everything out beforehand. And then switch over to live mode when you're ready. All the details for this can be found in the documentation for whatever payment gateway you want to use. And if you want a detailed tutorial on any of these, let me know in the comment section down below. So once you've done that, save your settings and you are good to go. If, like me, you just simply want to test this out with some test payment options, use the test payment option at the end, enable this, set it into sandbox mode, save your settings, and you are good to go. Finally, if you want to work with coupons, you can enable the option and you can add any coupons you want inside here. That's the basics of setting things up here. There's a couple of more things we need to do before we start building our products, though. You'll see we've got Inventory Manager. Now, by default, this is not enabled. So what we need to do is come into Integrations, and from there, just enable the Inventory Module, and then you'll have access to that functionality. Then if we go back to our Global Settings, Inventory Manager, you can see there's my watch. All you need to do is add new inventory, give it a name, Give it a total quantity and you are set. That's our inventory management all set up. Very, very simple. Now let's go and create the form that's going to be part of our product. We're going to come in and add a new form. 
You can choose a template or create a conversational form. But for this example, we're going to start with a blank form. And now we can drag and drop all the different elements we want into this area. Now you'll notice on the right hand side, we've got payment fields. Make sure that if you don't see this, you've got the payment module, the payments option set up and activated like we've just seen. Otherwise, this won't show up. But this is where you can do the bulk of what you're going to do with any kind of e-commerce options in Fluent Forms Pro. So the first thing you're going to do is add a payment item in. So we'll click to add this in. You can see there's our payment item. It's filled out some basic info, but we want to change that. So we're going to change things over. First of all, we're going to come into the advanced options. And from there, we're going to use the option to say that this is going to be using inventory. So you can see right at the bottom, inventory settings. We've got simple and we've got global. So if we choose global, for example, we can then choose our Sapphire watch. And now we can set this up and our stock is going to be managed. So you may be setting this in different places, have multiple different products. You can set up your stock control and then connect it up inside here. So we can then handle how we want the stock out or out of stock message. So you can see we can hide it when it's no stock, show stock available and so on. We'll set this to say show available stock. We leave everything else as it is. And then we can come to the payment item and we can set a name inside you if we want to. You can set your admin field label. And then if you want to, you can set a product display type. So we just send this as a single one item. But you can, if you want to, have a single item, a radio item. So you can have multiple different options, check boxes, or select. And you can add different images to each one of those options should you want to. We're just sending a single product. So we don't need to worry about that. We'll drop in our pricing. So this is £10,000. Price is fine. Required. We'll just leave that as yes. And there's the first part of our product setup. Now, obviously, there's a lot more we can do here. So let's come back to our input fields. And now we can choose other things, like say, for example, we want to enable the coupon option. Well, we can click to add that in. There's our coupon option. We can set the coupon, anything else we want inside you, and the buttons and so on. For this example, though, I'm not going to worry about a coupon because this is a very expensive item and we don't want people to be able to have money off it. We want all their money. Then we can choose the payment method. So we can add this payment method in and you can see this will show our offline payment. But if you've got more than one, you can set it up and you can choose which ones you want. So again, if we choose this, we come over, you can see there's all our options. So payment method, the admin label and so on. We're just using offline payment, but if you have multiple, they'll be available inside you and you can just check which ones you want to use. Again, we can then set things like default values, what's required and so on. So this bare minimum, this is all you really need, but we want to add in some of those additional things. So let's come back to our input fields. And from there, we're just going to use a general field. We're going to then come in and we're going to say we want to use a drop down. We'll select. You can see there's our drop down. We're going to change this to strap type. We'll add in the admin field label as well, so we know what this column will actually relates to. And you can see we've got the placeholder, so you can say what you want inside this. So we may want to change this to say select strap type to make it a little bit more obvious. And then underneath, we can just simply put in the values. So first option, add our second option. And if you want to add more in, you can simply click the plus. And once you're happy, you set that up. You can then shuffle the available options if you want to, enable searching for smart options. We've only got a couple of options here, so we're going to leave it as it is. And we're going to say, yes, this is required because they need to be able to choose a strap. Otherwise, they're going to get a bare bones watch. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So all we need to do now is just move this into position so it makes more sense to be above. So there we go. There's our first thing. And let's add one more field in and say we want to add in our input field. And we're going to say simple text. And this one, we'll select it. We'll change this over and we'll call this personalization. Again, admin field label, placeholder. That'll do. And we say, yes, this is required. And there we go. So now just position that where we want it. Now, the final thing I want them to be able to do is choose how many products they want to purchase. They may have a massive budget and want multiple watches. Well, we're going to input fields. This time, again, our payment fields option, and we're going to add in our item quantity. We'll drag that underneath the price. One final thing we need to do is connect this up to the number that we want to enable. So you can see minimum value, we're going to say is going to be one. Maximum value, well, you can leave that blank if you want to. And we can just put the element labels in as well. So we'll pop these in. There we go. So we've set everything up on there. So before we wrap things up, let's change this from submit form to something that makes a bit more sense. So we'll click on there, change this over, and we'll just say by now. Okay, so we're going to say we're happy with our form. Everything is in place. We'll save our form. And now we're ready to add this into our design and start testing it out. Now, I've already created the page for our product. All we need to do is put in the form. So you can see everything is in place. Very simple. We're just using Gutenberg native functionality, no additional plugins. So what we need to do, we click the plus, 
We'll search for Fluent Forms, we'll add that in, and all we need to do now is choose the form that we want to connect. So we say there's our Sapphire Watch demo, and you see there's all our information. So everything is ready and set. So let's update this and let's go and test it out on the front end of our site. So here's our product page, scroll down and you can see there's our product. Now you notice this says there's five available because this is using the global management of all of our inventory. So we may have this form used in multiple different locations, connected to the same product, or maybe just different forms, but still connected to the same product using the inventory management. And that will update globally across your entire site, no matter how many times you have that set up in different parts of your site. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so we see how many are available. We can set our quantity, so we'll say we want to buy one. We can choose our strap type. We'll say we want vegan leather for this example. And we'll add our personalization, because who doesn't want to put a whoop whoop in there? And then we just click on buy now, and that will then complete the purchase and add that into our order process. And there you go. You can see now we've got our order. If we want to, we can go and view this. And there's our order all set up. Again, if we hop into the back end of our site, come into Fluent Forms Pro and come into our entries, you can see there's our entry, there's our Sapphire watch. We can click to open this up. And as you can see, there's all our details. So there's our strap type, the personalization, the order value. Again, we can edit our transaction and we'll say that this has been paid. Confirm it. And everything is in place for us. So we've now created the order, we've placed the order, everything is in place. So we've got a really simple e-commerce solution, all set up using Fluent Forms Pro. And if you want to see another example of using Fluent Form Pro to handle things like subscriptions, check out this video next. As always, all applicable links are in the description. If you want to find out more, check those out.